Hello and welcome back to my studio. It's Lois here from Lois and Morgana Davidson Art and today I'm going to be re revisiting um, a photograph I painted a few years ago. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description below to the previous demo that I did. It's this lovely tranquil scene. Um, we've got really still water and a grey sky that's reflected in the water. It's just the same colour. Um, and in my last attempt at it, I left out the distant harbour arm and the lighthouse. I'll be including these details in this demonstration, but I'll be changing the lengths of them slightly. This is the photograph from Pixabay. I'll leave a link to that in the description below too. And you can see I've shortened the distant harbour arm and extended the rocks out slightly. And I think it gives us a more balanced composition. As always, the first step for me is to very simply sketch the scene out. This time I'm using a ruler to position my horizon lines and harbour wall. Keeping it really simple, just putting in the main features, not getting bogged down by detail. Once I'm happy with the position of all my elements in this simple painting, then I shall wet the paper all over. I'm using a large wash brush, any wash brush will do. Um, I favour at the moment this one and a half inch Princeton Aqua Elite Mottler brush. But this brush isn't necessary for this painting. Whichever wash brush you prefer to wet the paper for this wet in wet process and then to put in the sky. Once my water's nice and um, evenly covering the page, I'll allow it to soak in a little bit and then mix up a really beautiful neutral grey using cobalt blue, raw sienna and burnt sienna. I don't want it too dark. I'm using horizontal brush strokes with my wash brush. Again, you can do this with any shape of wash brush. It doesn't have to be the mottler. It could be a large mop or a harky brush. Just dragging the paint in horizontal brush strokes, covering the paper as quickly as I can. I'm using Milford um, cold press watercolour paper. It's taped to my board uh, with ordinary decorators masking tape and my board's at an angle of about 20 degrees. So gravity is helping to gently drift the paint downwards. And if I keep sort of um, using these horizontal brush strokes, I can slightly graduate my wash so it's darker at the top and becomes sort of lighter across the middle and then slightly darker across the bottom. Once my wash is in place, I'm going to use a paper towel to really carefully wipe the tape to make sure no water or paint that sits on the tape um, sort of finds its way back into the painting and causes sort of runbacks around the edge. At the moment, I don't pre-stretch my paper and you can see that it's starting to buckle where it's wet. And what will happen is as it dries naturally, um, then it will tighten back up and more or less flatten. But I'm starting to begin to think that I might start to um, pre-stretch my paper uh, more often. And if I do, I'll show you um, how I do that. Let me know in the comments if that would be of interest to you. And now continuing to paint wet in wet, I'm going to drop in a bit of colour on my middle ground harbour walls, my rocks and my trees. For this I'll be dipping in and out of my raw sienna, burnt sienna, indigo, cobalt blue and my sap green.
So that's the first wet in wet stage more or less done. You can see I've lifted out carefully with a rolled up piece of paper towel where my lighthouse is. And now I'm using my palette knife just to scrape a few branches um, through the trees. If you prefer to do this with paint later when everything's dry, um, then of course that's another option. But part of my style is to use this scraping technique at this sort of point. So now I need to leave it to dry completely and then I can come back and finish the painting using the wet on dry technique. So here's the dry painting. You can see the sea and sky has dried really nicely. I've got some subtle granulation to it. It's a slightly warmer colour than it's showing on the screen at the moment. Uh, the light in my studio is not great today. I forgot to switch on the camera, but I've just painted in the distant harbour wall with a glaze of the same colour as the sky. By layering it up, I get a darker mark, but still nice and pale to give me that aerial perspective that I need for that distant harbour arm, keeping it nice and simple as it's in the distance. Um, I'm just going to drop in some slightly darker colour from the indigo into the wet wash while it's still wet and because my board's at an angle of 20 degrees then um, that dark will drift towards the bottom of the harbour wall and just give me a shadow. Once I've dropped the shadow in, then I'm going to mix up a nice dark colour with my indigo and burnt sienna and I shall swap to my three quarter inch flat brush. I'll use the corner of the flat brush and sort of short sweeping strokes to start to paint in the rocks. And Once I've got enough of the rocks in with that dark colour, I'll add a little bit of burnt sienna to them and then begin to introduce a few reflections at their bases. So that's the um, dark value put into my rocks. Now I'm going to lift a little bit of lighter value out using my palette knife. And I'm going to scrape across the top of the rocks in places um, just to scrape back to that um, neutral grey um, sky and sea colour. And that will give me just a little bit of light reflecting on the top of the rocks.
You can do this as well by just simply lifting out with a damp brush and dabbing with a tissue if you'd rather not use the palette knife or the corner of a store card to um, create this effect. And continuing now to use the flat brush, but dipping into burnt sienna, raw sienna, a bit of indigo, um, and using the flat of the brush rather than the tips and the corner, I'm going to drag it down over my walls in various places, either vertically or horizontally, and then using the tips just to dot in a bit of texture here and there to slowly begin to try to build up um, the kind of texture of the wall without having to paint in every brick. I'm trying to get a bit of dry brush here and there as well and sort of layering up these effects. Once I'm happy with the wall so far, I'm going to begin to add a bit of detail and some richer colour to the tree. And for this, I'm using my small calligraphy brush, but any small brush with a good point. And I'm mixing into sap green for the lighter colour, uh, which is what I used for the wet in wet part. And I'm trying to dance the brush around with calligraphic brush strokes leaving some gaps so that the lighter green shows through and dipping into some perylene green to give me some nice really nice dark greens too just working around these shapes trying to work around the marks that i etched in for the trunks with the palette knife in the wet in wet wash so that they show through too And then a couple more marks etched through the green paint um, just to reveal a few more highlights using the palette knife. And then the next thing to do is to paint the uh, middle wall using the same brush, the same method and the same colours as I used for the wall below the trees.
And finally, introducing some darker value for some nice deep shadows in those walls and then using the very tips of the flat brush to put in the post for my lamp post. I did originally draw in two lamp posts, but I've decided to leave out the lamp post against the wall because it got a bit lost there. Sorry, bumped the tripod there. Then with the small calligraphy brush, a little darker mark right underneath where the, um, the lamp itself is going to be, which I shall put a bit of white gouache on at the end to make it stand out a bit more. And now I've mixed up a pale value cobalt blue to just put in the cap on the little lighthouse and the little blue um, thing next to it, which I'm not sure in the photo what it is. It might be a sign or part of the structure, but I'm just going to put that in very roughly, very loosely, and then I'll add a bit of water to my cobalt blue and use that same colour to put a little bit of shadow across the body of the lighthouse itself so it shows up a bit more. And that's it for that distant lighthouse. It doesn't need to be too detailed as it's quite far away. So I'll um, use a rigger brush and just the dark grey and bring down um, a sort of a, a wiggly line below that lamp post so that I get that reflecting in the still water. And then uh, a little bit of pale reflection below the lighthouse. And then finally, I'm going to use the same colours as I used in my middle ground walls to paint in um, some reflection of those walls and then just to add a bit of extra dark tone here and there if I need any darker value in the walls where there are shadows. So hopefully that's just enough um, shadow and texture in the walls to add that sort of suggested detail and to pull the scene together with the tonal values. So I think that's just about finished. I'll remove uh, the tape and see how it looks with its clean white border. Straight away removing those um, taped edges 
helps us to see the painting um, almost as if it's in a frame. And of course, I still need to add that little dot of white gouache to that um, street lamp sort of globe. So I'm just going to use a fine brush and just dip into the tube directly of the white gouache and just a little tiny dot of white there. And then maybe a suggestion of a light reflection towards the bottom of the painting uh, with just a little bit of gouache. Probably don't need that, but while it's on the brush. And I'll get a better, um, better photograph of the painting. Um, here it is looking as it does in, in real life with that lovely warm glow to this um, tranquil sky and sea. And I'm really pleased with the way this has turned out. Um, and I hope you found it helpful watching the various techniques that I've used here and that you'll be able to use those techniques in your paintings, not necessarily for this particular demo, but hopefully everything that I show you here are transferable skills that you can practice and use in many of your own paintings. So thank you so much for watching. Please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And as always, many thanks to all our wonderful patrons who support this channel. I'll see you again soon. Take care and happy painting. Bye.